Hello, my beloved brothers and sisters in all the corners of this world under the heavens. I am Evangelist Persia Freida. I come to you today with expose concerning African spirituality and the ancestry worship. Before the making of this video, I asked the Holy Spirit to empower me in order to make my brothers and sisters to understand me. This is not a judgment, as if I am above of you in the sight of the Most High, our God. However, we must know what His will is in order to have a, a connection with Him and to have a healthy relationship with Him. Brothers and sisters, first of all, I want, to, I want to tell you this, and this is very serious and a warning from me as your sister, because I love you. The decision you make today will result in where you spend your eternity. Whatever decision you make today, there is always a consequence. I repeat it for you. Whatever decision you make today, there is always a consequence for yourself. What you decide today in your spiritual life shall bring a result in your eternal life. So, before the making, of this video, I did my research. I did my research on the subject, and I came to conclusion that both African spirituality and the ancestry worship are pure idolatry in the sight of the Most High, your God, the God of your ancestors, our God, the God of Israel. The African spirituality is full of many gods, and the goddess is with small g, of course. And this is wrong. Because the Most High required and requires, still require from us, exclusive worship. The Most High your God re demanded from your ancestors an exclusive worship. However, your ancestors went after other gods with small g, then they fell. They fell below. That's why. You should not be 
is soaking them today. Because they have gone. They are nowhere to help you out. They couldn't themselves to help themselves. Then how shall them how shall they help you now? That's impossible. First of all, there is no calling with the dead. There is no communication with the dead. And I will read some Bible verses concerning the matter. This is the story that I believe that some of you who are with me at the same level of spirituality or some of you who are in the same level in spiritual things already know this story. This is the story that the Messiah Yahusha, not Caesar Borgia, but Yahusha, the biblical Yahusha, our Messiah, told to the people who lived in that time with him. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom, the rich man also died and was buried. So it was that. No, sorry. And being in the torments, in heads, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So the, the, the rich man he was dead. And he lifted, so being in the torments in heads, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Abra Father Abraham, have mercy on me. This is the, the rich man crying for help. To Abraham's calling him father. Abraham, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us, listen brothers and sisters, there is no calling with the dead. There is no possible communication with the dead. And beside this, all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. You see? 
So there's no communication with the dead, beloved. So this is in the New Testament. And I have one more in the New Testament. So now we go to Abuse 19 to 27. Excuse me, because I just, I said we were about to read Luke 16 verses 19 to 31 and I only read until 27. So I will carry on to verse 31, <clears throat> verse 27, so in Luke 16, so it's 19, verse 19 to 31. So carry on <coughs> from, sorry, from verse 10, 27. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, the rich man asking, Abraham to send to his father's house, like to warn him, to warn them for him, because he was in the torment, in order that they or his family who were alive changed their ways. So let's continue. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. Asking the father Abraham to send Lazarus, the man that he didn't care about when he was living in this earth as a rich man. Now he's in the heaven. No, now he's in hell. He's in torment. Now he is asking the father Abraham to send Lazarus to his father's house to warn his relatives. You see? Then we continue. For I have five brothers, he says, that he may testify to them lest they also come to this place of torment. Verse 29, Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. So as you see, my dear brothers and sisters, this is a very serious matter. Then we have Hebrews 9.27, Hebrews 9.27, so Hebrews 9.27 says, And has it is appointed for men to die once, but after this judgment. Beloved, this is Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And has it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. My dear brothers and sisters, this is not a simple presentation. 
this is an issue of salvation. Because the Af African spirituality will never lead you to salvation. African spirituality is something that will take you straight to hell. Ancestry worship will lead you to destruction. That's a very serious matter. And then we have First John chapter 4 verses 1 to 3. First John chapter 4 verse 1 to 3. It says, Beloved, that was Paul the Apostle speaking. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world and we live in these days where the stage to welcome all things and everything that are of the Antichrist are already set in place. Now, I'm taking you to John 14, 26. John 14, 26. John 14, 26 says, But this is the Lord Yahusha, not Caesar Borgia, but Yahusha, the biblical Messiah, our Messiah. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. This is what he said to his apostles. So we have one helper. This helper is the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, we don't we don't we do not have any other helper aside. The only helper we have for all things and everything we have to know is the Holy Spirit. And we have to remain 
in the faith. We have to exercise our faith in the Most High. In the Most High alone, rely in the Most High alone. Because we only have one God. The God of Israel. This is the God of your ancestors. And we all have one mediator. The mediator is not your ancestors. No, it is not our ancestors. The mediator we have is Yahusha. Yahusha is the only or oh, is one mediator between the Most High and has has men now always speaking about the ancestry worship I will take you to Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 to 5. These verses are the evidence that the Most High, the God of Israel, the God of your ancestors, our God, He demanded from your ancestors and he still demands from us an exclusive worship so we go to Esotus Exodus, verses 1 to 5. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a caved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me. And you know something, when I was doing my research in that subject, I came to know that the majority of the, God, the, the gods, 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 and the goddesses with small g are dwelling in the waters. So, the Most High is the same yesterday and today. He has never changed his ways and he will never change his ways. It's up to us to change our ways. And uh, some of you made statements such as, oh, 
when the invaders came to the motherland, they have destroyed our shrines. They have destroyed our gods. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. This is not uh, funny, but uh, you see, who is the man with such a potential to destroy God? <laughs> Come on, brothers and sisters. That's not possible. If the invaders went to the modern land and destroyed your gods and your shrines, that's because the shrines, no, first of all, the, your gods were fake ones, not the true gods. They were gods of stone and wood. I'm sorry, brothers. Just excuse me for this. I didn't want to love it. But excuse me. Yeah, brothers and sisters, only gods with small g, gods of stone and wood can be destroyed by man's hand, you know. And uh, I will confirm this with you. Please come with me at the book, come with me to the book of uh, Isaiah, chapter 37, verses 15 to 20. We will confirm what I said, that only gods of stone and wood can be destroyed. Okay, brothers and sisters, <laughs> I am there. From verses 15 to 20, this is a prayer for, for, from uh, King Ezekiah. This king, he was one of your ancestors. And listen what he did, what he said in his prayer. O oh Lord, of hosts, God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim, you are God, you alone of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and the earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes. O Lord, and see, and hear all the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to reproach the living God. Truly, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire, but, sorry, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were not gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. You see? You see, my dear brothers and sisters, this is what the king Ezekiah said in his prayer. Therefore, they destroyed them. Brothers, bro come on, brothers and sisters. This is what happened to the gods with small g who were dwelling in those shrines in the motherland. That's why they have been destroyed. You see? So this is not my sayings. This is the prayer of one of your ancestors. 
the king of Israel, King Ezekiah. So, as you see, then, verse 15, then Ezekiah prayed to the Lord, saying, so that was his prayer, you know, and he said, in verse 19, and truly, no, no, from verse 18, truly, Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste on the nations and their lands. And have cast their gods into the fire. For they were not gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they destroyed them. So, uh, brothers and sisters, this is an evidence that you only have one God. The Most High, who made heavens and earth. There are no any other God, you know. So please believe me, because this is not a religious psychosis. No, it is not. Because, you know, when I was a student in the 80s, I used to live my life ignoring the existence of the Most High, our God. I used to say there's no God. God doesn't exist. But I have had an event in my life that has changed completely the way I was seeing things, you know, because I just asked the Most High. That was back in 1993. I Ask the Most High this, like this. God, if truly, truly, or really, really, really exist, show me a sign of your existence. If you don't show me a sign of your existence, I will just forget about it. And I will still live in the life I am living. Then something happened. He showed me the sign of his existence. So then I become a born again Christian. And uh, I am here now doing what I am doing because I love you. And I want you to be saved. So, let's continue. So, we have more verses. Um, we have Psalm 146, verse 4. Psalm 146, what's the verse 4? 146, verse 4. Okay. So, it says, His spirit departs. He returns to his earth. In that very day, his plan is perish. So, this is the condition of men when we die. And we have another verse from the book of Ecclesiastes that shows us the condition of the dead. That's why I said there is no possible communication with the dead. There's no calling with the dead, my beloved. Believe me, this is God's word. Stating it is not me. So we go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes is the one of the books of King Solomon. 
king of Israel, a former king of Israel, one of your ancestors. Okay. Ecclesiastes 9, verses 5 to 6. Live joyfully with the wife whom you love all the days of your vain life which she has given you under the sun, all your days of vanity, for that is your portion in life and in the labor which you perform under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your, with your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. So, my beloved, there is no communication at all with the dead. And now, in the same book of Ecclesiastes, and the same, how can I say, just, just the condition of the dead. Ecclesiastes, uh, just, just a moment, Ecclesiastes 7. Oh, my beloved, his Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7 claims. This is the condition of the dead. That's why I told you, and I will say it again, again and again, and again, over again, again and again. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. So, my beloved, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, he is saying that when we die, the flesh goes to the ground because from the ground it, it was formed. And the spirit goes back to the most high who gave it. So, this is the condition of the dead. The dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. This is the condition of the dead. So where is here the communication with the dead? There's no possible communication with the dead. And if you look at the logo of the ancestry worship, you see a curved image so this is one of the things, one of the things that the Most High prohibited them not to do. And they made it. That was yesterday, your ancestors. They made carved images for themselves. If you see today, in the modern land, in almost all the countries, in the modern land, you will find carved images, molded images, images of uh, all forms and sizes, and uh, all of them are of stone and wood. Today, we see it in Africa, in Akebulan aka Africa, and this is what the ancestors did in the past, yes, they made carved images for themselves, and they knew, because the Most High told them that this is something bad, but today, made it anyway. So, my beloved, to end my subject today, 
I have some recommendations for you. First of all, the beliefs that ancestors help and that can influence in our favor or cause disasters or change events is false. However, familiar spirits, demons, and the devils can perform things to make people believe the lie. I love you. I want you to be saved. We live in a time and hour that we have to repent. Like never before. To pray like never before. To fast like never before. To live in a total and complete obedience, submission, like never before to the Most High. To surrender totally and completely to the Most High and to the Lord Yahusha, our Messiah, the Messiah of the people who exercise faith in the Most High's Father and in Him because he was sent by his father. We have to submit it totally and completely to the Most High and his son. We have to depend totally and completely on the Most High, our God. And I recommend you to read Psalm 37. Brothers and sisters, this is not a sample presentation. This is an issue of salvation. And at last, as I was worried concerning that matter, I asked the Most High, what should I do to help you? to come out from this kind of idolatry and abomination. The Most High led me to Osha, the prophet, chapter, sixes, chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. And I will close my expose. Osha 6, verses 1 to 3. <clears throat> Sorry. This is a call to repentance. Because you have to repent. It's time to repent. Come and let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will rise us up, that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established. As the morning, he will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth. So, beloved, this is a time to wake up. This is a time to humble ourselves. This is a time to seek the Most High and His ways. Now is the time. We cannot wait until it is too late. 
ended. Salvation is by grace, through faith, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Some of you are saying now, I am my own creator. Yes, we can create things because you see, the word of God in the Proverbs, we have a verse that claims that we are what we think we can create because our thoughts have power because the mind has power what you believe with your mind the mind will achieve it what your mind conceives your mind will make it will achieve it however this is not the same like I am my creator, I will save myself because you cannot save yourselves. I cannot save myself. Salvation is only by grace and through faith. What means without exercising faith in the Most High and in the Lord Yahusha, we cannot be saved. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So, only by, only, by, by gra only by grace and the true faith we are saved. And Prophet Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 11, claims, This is the God with small g, the one that dwell in the waters. They are not children of water that have to be related to us, because they are demons. Demons, my brothers and sisters. These are the gods that will be destroyed. Jeremiah chapter 10. Verse 11, thus you shall say to them, the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. These are idols. If you still stubborn, in the belief of the African spirituality, if you still stubborn and prevail with the ancestry worship, you will live under bondage all your life. You know why? Because the gods and the goddess with a small g, they are demons, devils, unclean spirit is that make you believe that they, have, they, that they have power 
that they can perform things for you to help you. That's a lie, a big lie. What they do, they ask from you. This is what they did with your ancestors and still do to this day with other people that believe in them. They ask for sacrifices. Each time you do not sacrifice anything to them, they will make your life a misery. And even sacrificing something to them, they will always be, be bullying you, harassing you. And if you have children, they will go after your children too. To make them live under bondage. And they are not there to perform something good for you. What they want you, what they, they want for you is you not believing in the most high your God, not trusting in the most high your God. They want you never to serve the most high your God, never to know the most high your God, Yahusha, your Lord, the saint by the most high your God, and serve him. They don't want you to serve him because the only act of devotion you have is you have to you have to, to do is for the most high your God and the Lord Yahusha. And the devil, he wants always an act of devotion to him because he wants to be worshipped. And when you walk in this way of idolatry and abomination, you are worshipping him. So today, he's enough. Thank you very, very much for being patient with me. Thank you very much for listening. I wish you the best in your spiritual life. I wish you to live forever the backsliding. I wish you to abandon the ways of backsliding and come back to the Most High your God because He loves you and He wants you to be saved.